Hello and welcome. So I got a great email recently and great for the reason that this is a question that I think impacts a lot of people who might come here, but I don't receive the email a lot. And I had a conversation with another person recently about this similar topic and I thought it would be then cool to touch on one of these videos and I've never done it before. Uh, and that is, what's it like being religious if you were to teach English in Japan? Is there anything that you desperately need to know? Are you worrying too much? All these different things that we could talk about. So first, among the questions that I was asked in the email, there were a few more, but I'll get to them at the end of it, non-religious related, uh, was this person uh, observes the Sabbath. And so how strict are some of these dispatch companies on work on the weekends? And I would say that you're basically in good shape if you're coming over here and that that's a concern that you have because you never, you rarely, I don't want to say never, but you rarely, rarely, rarely have to work on weekends. The only occasion that that might occur is if you have a sports festival. And if you absolutely didn't want to, I think that you could either take the day off or claim some religious reason because you have the dispatch company as a middleman between you. And if you religiously observe that, then they wouldn't force you to. And these sports festivals are kind of an invite thing, but you don't have to. I might look at it though, or might suggest that you look at it like, it's not really work. <laughs> you're, you're getting paid to do something so cool and carefree and relaxed that to go to one of these uh, undokais really couldn't put you back by much. Like you will actually feel enriched by it. You'll probably be relaxed by it. And so it's not this sort of like industrious work that you might associate with a negative while doing on the Sabbath. So don't worry about that, especially if you're in one of these large dispatch companies. If you were to be a direct hire, then there are occasions where the school does require you to work on the weekend and that becomes a more difficult question and you'd want to bring that up in your interview. Uh, but this question was concerning these larger dispatch companies like Eon or Ion or ECC or Interact or something like that. So don't worry about it too much, and maybe with this perspective that you're not necessarily working, working, uh, you could enjoy it. Uh, the next question I had was about drinking, because there is a large social drinking culture in Japan. Uh, you're often invited out to these enkais, and these enkais are cool social gatherings where everybody gets together, probably gets uh, all you can drink, all you can eat, hangs out, and you socially bond. Now are you required to drink? Because for some who are religious, you that that's not what you do, it's not your jam. So you're not going to drink. It is not mandatory. And in fact, you'll save a little bit of money if you don't drink. And there's tons of teachers at these events all the time who don't drink because they have to drive home later. And so maybe if again, you were like in the true blue business atmosphere of Japan and you were in some big, I don't know, kind of factory company, uh, in Tokyo, then this would be a greater concern. But with these kind of like school enkais that you go out to, not so much a concern. You aren't going to impact your social standing in any way if you don't drink. Everyone is going to be equally as social with you were you not to drink. So you don't need to worry about that as well. And then I wanted to generally talk about, those are the couple religious questions from the email, but I wanted to talk specifically about religious impressions that Japanese people might have of you when you come over. Because I was talking to a gentleman who, his appearance, he is Middle Eastern, but he's not a Muslim. And his fear was that for some of the, uh, the negative impressions that Muslim Islam, Islam has, not Muslim, I made up a new religion. Uh, so for some of the negative impressions that Islam has, has I can't speak today, has in Japan, would people make assumptions about him based on his outer appearance? And should he be worried about something like that? And this, I think people could find a twofold piece with. Generally speaking, I'll, I think probably approach the thing that's most important is, although the Japanese are monoculture, although they're quite um, a secluded society in many ways, they're not pre, uh, predisposed to judging people like that. It's not at the forefront of their mind when they meet you, what is your religion? I think it probably stems from the fact that the Japanese are not devoutly religious in any way. 
and that they they worship something japanese religion shinto or buddhism is more of a kind of here and now experience and not concerned with deities so much as the deities might surround them they're not concerned about what a deity is thinking and they don't it doesn't as i say predispose them to any sort of negative feelings towards you so they don't they don't care if you're uh, a muslim they don't care if you're a christian they might if you're like a white guy and they think that you're from america they might assume that you're a christian but they 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 would never like it would never come into conversation it would be like at the back of their mind and i think the same would hold true as well of uh, if you were middle eastern i i don't even think they would know at that point they might be thinking like maybe he's a buddhist or maybe he's this but it's never at the forefront of a japanese person's mind maybe not all of them there's 130 million or whatever it is but it's not something you need to worry about you don't need to fear for you having some sort of religious alignment that the Japanese people would judge you for that. And that, that's speaking to a number of different people from a number of different religious backgrounds that I've met who are here. Speaking to my own especially, because I don't have a particular religious in line, alignment, uh, it's been totally fine. Um, but for those other people who have more devout feelings towards whatever path that they are following, never ever a problem for them, and never prejudged as a result in a negative way of how they look. So if they did look some way, maybe, maybe somebody's going to think that you're religiously aligned with something, but not that that would ever lead to a negative way to think about you. And as I've talked about before, because there are so few foreigners still in Japan, if, you, if you're in an area like this, then you really do get a chance, if you are from a religious background, to create a sort of initial impression of it. Again, not that it would probably come up that much, but if people did know that you were Christian, or you were Muslim, or you were Jewish, they would probably, a lot of the people that you would meet would kind of be like, that's what that particular religious group is like, because they don't know that many. Um, yeah, so I, th I think there's a lot of hope for somebody who wants to come here and who might have felt prejudice in some other place that they were living, that you, you could worship freely here, uh, and you wouldn't feel any prejudice because of it, regardless of any religion that you are, and that's a testament to the open-mindedness and the, the kindness of the, the Japanese people, the majority of, I would say. So there were a few more questions here that were uh, I'll quickly run through because I wanted to answer the whole email, not this kind of general discussion of religion. It was, are there a lot of gyms in Japan? No, there are not a lot of gyms in Japan unless you are in the city. If you're in the city, you'll have no problem. I live out in the countryside. I went to like seven different places and I finally found one and it's really, really expensive, but it gives me exactly what I want. So I'm very, very happy with it. So gyms, not so much in the countryside. You really have to search or maybe you just get lucky. I was in the last town that I lived in. Or if you are in a city, it's no problem at all. You're fine. Um, last question was, what do ALTs even do? <laughs> that would depend entirely on the school that you're at. But for the most part, I would say that you're in an assistant role. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise if they're like, no, that's a myth. No, it's not. I know tons and tons of ALTs and that's the role that they're in. They're in an assistant role. But there is this other demographic of teachers here who are an ALT who would more actively be the leader of the class. And I'll make the uh, delineation between elementary school and junior high school. Junior high school, because the grammar is so much more complex, you're often taking that kind of background step and you're assisting more because things are so complex that the, the Japanese English teacher needs to take a uh, more of a leadership role to get that more complex grammar across. Whereas in elementary school, because there almost is no grammar, it's just vocabulary and basic, basic phrases, you can lead absolutely everything. So you, there you have it. You have, that's what an ALT does. You basically assist unless you're in an elementary school, in which case you'll be leading much, much more. And then aside from that, it does vary a little bit from school to school. My buddy led all of his stuff, but he's more the exception, not the rule. All right, thanks for checking the video out. Uh, follow me on Instagram, like the video, subscribe to the channel, it's awesome. Check out my Patreon for a little bit of extra stuff and I always appreciate the support from everyone. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.